running around and I feel like I'm lost. 31, addict, felon, nobody's gonna take me, nobody's gonna hire me. So before Project Direct Link, that the only option was to schedule the appointments before the release from custody. Um, and then they would have to hopefully attend that appointment on an outpatient level, which was why we um, designed the program because we didn't wanna have that gap in service. We wanted to be able to provide the service while they were in there and then get them set up so that they can continue their care when released. I feel like if they release me back into the normal world, I don't know if I'd be here right now because I would have had nothing to fall back on. No therapy, no group, no support. In order to uh, be eligible, you have to have a history of opiates. You have to have seven to 10 days clean from an opiate or any kind of med-assisted treatment. I've tried every route. I've tried other MAP treatments. I've tried every therapy, jails, just being you know locked up for 30 days, detoxes, six months in patients. The only thing that has worked for me is Vivitrol. It works really well. Um, we see high rates of engagement and follow-up. Um, we're able to track individuals and assist with like any coordination that they need. And a lot of people have said that having that Vivitrol before they're released from custody um, has increased them engaging in service and then they felt better. They actually came into the facility and gave me the shot before I even left the facility. So it was, it was perfect. When thinking of people who struggle with substance use, um, they're typically underlying reasons and getting that therapy um, through the continuum of care is really crucial in their recovery. I'm a firm believer that the addiction is just the symptom of the problem, that there's always something else going on. That's just how that individual person has decided to cope with it. So it's always a bigger picture than just using. I started working with Sierra fresh out of CTF. Um, and my initial reaction was somebody who wanted recovery, but didn't know where to start. Um, more of her life had been spent in addiction than not. I see Caitlin once a month, but um, when I do see her, anything that's been bugging me, I can always call her too. But she helped me a lot with grief counseling and trying to adjust back into the world. When I first met Sierra, I, when she was telling me her story and her history of opiates, I, I think I thought survivor. You know, I thought about all the things that she's been through up to this point, and she is still standing. Vivitrol is a great tool to assist in someone's recovery but it really is the work that the individuals are doing while they're receiving the Vivitrol, um, staying consistent with their appointments, engaging in their individual therapy, engaging in the group counseling. It's really scary and really hard when we tell you that you have to set aside everything that you've used up until that point to cope with life and to get through life. I want to work in treatment. I feel like it's something I would be able to do. I have a lot of friends in the treatment world, AA, all of that. I uh, eventually want to move to South Carolina <laughs> and have a house and have my fiance or kids down there with me and just live a normal, what I consider a normal life compared to what, I, what my life was prior. We have processed things that she has not wanted to talk about and has been, you know, like, I don't want to talk about this. I was like, okay, not, maybe not right now, but we get there, we get there eventually and you know, she's done great things and has become, you know, an amazing, an amazing individual who's been able to, you know, put aside a lot of these old ways of thinking, these old patterns, these old behaviors, and has created a new life.